minutes of meeting of the Washington Special Actions Group, Washington, July 18, 1974. So the subject is, of course, Cyprus. We have many participants. I will not study the summary of conclusion, just one point, as you can see it, uh, the Soviet statement on its position on the dispute. So you see that we have the word dispute, not issue for the moment. They never mentioned the, the word invasion, not exactly occupation, but for the moment, for the Soviet system is of course just a dispute. Let's start, we have uh, two lines uh, which are not declassified before. And we have an answer from Kissinger. I don't think that would happen while Echevit is in London. So you can see that there is a problem. Uh, we have a remark from General Brown. There's only one small point of concern to us. As you know, our naval forces are now in a holding pattern. So they are waiting for <laughs> instructions. Well to the west of Cyprus, as we discussed, the other day. This is for the naval forces, but for the amphibious forces are 24 hours away from Cyprus. Do you think it would be wise to permit them to come closer, say 10 to 12 hours from the island? The point is totally tactical. It's related to readiness. We have a goodwill about the ceasefire, but also maybe an intervention very close to the island if it is possible, if it is necessary to do it. But in any case, you can see that the Americans are ready to do something if there is a need. We have a remark from Clemens before the answer of Kissinger. You know, we have several military programs, hardware, ongoing with the Greek regime. You may want to play with that one. I am not advocating we stop the program, just that you may want to consider it, it. It is related to Greece. It means that they have forces there, but the idea of Clemens is maybe to use some of them, not to stop the program, of course, but to use some of them to go to Cyprus, which seems to be something rather possible, it's up to you. And Kissinger says, okay, I'll think about that. Don't worry about the upgraded alerts. It's logical. So the point of Kissinger is the Soviets would know that we have upped our alert status, how long would it take to the 82th Airborne, for example, to get to Cyprus if we had two? So you see, even with the upgrade of the alert, the problem of Americans is at the same time, what will be the reaction of the Soviets? So you see that the game is not only we are outside, 
of the chessboard. No, we are in the same chessboard, a very big one, Cold War. And we have a very small part of the chessboard, which is the Cyprus issue. So they have to play all the time thinking about the reaction of Soviets. So we have some explanation of the General Brown. It's okay. And the position is what we have to do with the increase or not of the outlet. And you see that he's asking, could we slightly increase the outlet? The general answer, yes, but at the same time, Kissinger added what? It's a bit premature to increase the outlet now, no need at this point. July 18. There are, of course, other units in Europe and Germany that we could send on a quicker basis. So you see, that it's another possibility. You see, Europe and Germany. You see the difference? But remember, Germany is already in the nine. But why? Because we are talking about West Germany, where there is a very high level of uh, military tactical weapons. So they want to use the amphibious force. It's the closest, okay? but have the problem of the 24 hours, one day. And you see now that we are talking about hours and not days, because it's very important. So they understand that the situation is crucial and there is a really crisis. So with Kissinger, I think it's premature if the Soviets find out, and they will, they might misunderstand. We don't know what this Odessa thing is anyway. So you see that they are talking about this possible option, but they don't want to use it right now, just because they might misunderstand the Soviets, the position of US with this intervention. So again, you see that we have the problem of how many Americans can go there? How many troops are from Greeks there? And also now the question is of course natural, is how many British troops are on the island. So the General Brown says, I think it's about 8,000. But you see that he mentioned this number, a little big for the reality. And the question of uh, Kissinger is uh, a real question and, and it, is, it is pertinent. Because all those old combat units, so in fact, no, some are. The others are what? Housekeeping units. And the final sentence, not all, I'm sure, would fight. I want to know what we have. Get me that chart. So, Colby, I think I have it here. 2,700 British Army troops and 5,300 
Royal Air Force personnel. So they have their numbers again with Kissinger. I saw some of my colleagues believe we are advocating the overthrow of the Ioannidis government, but that is not our policy. We still have the Cyprus problem with Turkish intervention. We are before the invasion. So the remark of uh, Kissinger is efficient. Why? Because he already says what? We are not talking only about Greece and you are near this. We are talking about the Cyprus issue. It's already a problem, but it's a problem before the real problem, the invasion. I think with that, you can see the readiness of Americans, at least at the level of the White House. Explanation. Our first objective is to avoid a Greek-Turkish war and Soviet intervention. Greek-Turkish war, one, and Soviet intervention. He is not talking about to avoid what? A Turkish invasion. Because he think that it's already something in the program. We can worry about Ioannidis later, okay? We do not want to tip, tip our hand on a Cyprus solution yet till we know what will come out of it. So we remember it's always the same problem, Macarius, Samson, Krilidis, to the point, Kissinger. We are not going to come out against Macarius. If he does come back to power, fine, but it's better that he comes back with US backing than with Soviet backing. What is the position? It seems to Kissinger that they are forced and they have to accept the comeback of Macarius. He wants to avoid uh, the help of Soviets. And you want to show that, okay, if we have to do this, which is a, a forced move, okay, forcé, as we said in chess, it's better to show that we are together. If the Turks go in and restore Macarius, he has no alternative but to lean more toward the Soviets and the Eastern Bloc. You see again and again this phraseology, the same idea, the same point, the same problem. A few lines after. Now we turn to the Cyprus problem. He says, as far as Macarius played cool, don't say anything if you can avoid it. Just repeat our standard line on the territorial integrity of Cyprus. So something quite general, integrity. This, of course, would make Macarius a Turkish stooge, and he would then look for a counter to Turkish influence. Idest, the East Bloc. What is the point? Macarius will be back, but under the pressure of Turks and to protect himself from them, as he cannot use Greeks, he will go with Soviets. This is the analysis of US. So you see that the problem is 
the Soviet East Bloc influence. Not only Soviets, but also the East Bloc. Imagine the Balkans. And the other point is the following. If Macarius accepts to come back, we still have the problem of how to get him back. If the Turks brought him back, he would look for a counter to the Turks. But we have nothing personally against Macarius. So it's clear, even at that point. The question of Colby is about Ioannidis. How strong is Ioannidis? And the answer of Kissinger is clear. I'm not worried about Ioannidis. If he falls, fine. That doesn't worry me. Let him fall because of his own incompetence. Getting rid of Ioannidis is no more a worry than keeping Ioannidis. It's no factor. A very clear point and very clear also about all these theories about the relation between uh, those guys. No relation, they don't care about that. He explained this with this mention, preventing a Greek-Turkish war and shift in the balance of power are factors. So he just said that, I don't think Ioannidis is going to survive very long anyway, which means it's not a factor. And of course, not an X factor. Colby from CAA, he is the weakest link in the chain. And at the end, we have some remarks, uh, again from Kissinger. I thought we made it clear yesterday that no ambassador will unilaterally decide about military aid programs. We remember he was upset uh, by the initiative of the ambassador. And the final point is, but I agree, I wouldn't send the heavy equipment, which means we are going to help, but not at, at the highest level, only light equipment. That's all.